Hi and welcome to FabFit TV. I am your host, Kim Barnes Jefferson. I help women to break free of the diet mindset so they can live a life of balance, peace, and harmony when it comes to diet and exercise. So today I want to talk about goals because I feel like, especially here we are knocking on the door of Memorial Day, so it's so easy to get lost in the shuffle of summer. And especially here in New England, I'm a summer girl. Like I live I'm going to live for like the next three and a half, four months and I'm keeping my fingers crossed that Mother Nature says, hey, we don't need to cool it down to at least, I'm going to push for um, Columbus Day, but I'm really wishing for Halloween. So we get lost and we're like, you know, it's summer and we just want to just go out and have fun and you know, put our goals on the point, uh, pull our goals on the shelf and then decide, you know, you know it, maybe it's a Labor Day, maybe it's the holidays, you're like, it's time for me to, you know, rein it in, get back on the horse. And so, if you've ever, if you're just sick and tired of setting a weight loss goal, if you are sick and tired of just thinking about a weight loss goal, sick and tired of thinking about a diet, listen up, this is going to be all for you. And so many times I think we don't like to set goals because, especially when it comes to weight loss, is that we've been disappointed in the past. You know, we may have set a goal and we may not have reached it. Or maybe we reached it and it didn't last. And so we, you know, we're left scratching our heads, you know, wondering why do I even bother? Why do we even try? And, you know, here's some statistics. I wrote some stuff down because I want you to feel like empowered. I want you to feel like you can possibly do this. So 25% of people abandon their, their fitness goal after one week, right? So that's 25% just gone into the ether. Like I'm done. I can't do this. Where 60% give up their goal within six months, right? So if you do the math, that leaves us with just 5% that stick with it, okay? 5%. Now, if you feel like, oh my gosh, I suck and I'm a failure, 5% of everyone who goes on a diet sees it through, sees it through to fruition. So I don't want you to feel like, you know, ugh, I stink. 5% only do it. So now if we take it to the next level where it's like, okay, for those people who, of those 5%, 5% of the 5%, <laughs> keep it off for good. And 14% of that 5% only keep it off because they, they were doing it for a major health scare. So, you know, I always say to people, when it comes to setting a goal, you have to understand why you're doing it. And I've said this before on the show, is that there are going to be times that you are going to question yourself. There are going to be times when it's cold outside, it's raining outside, there's brownies and ice cream and rosé that you're like, oh, hell no, I'm not on a diet and I'm eating that. But you always have to come back to your why. And if your why is strong enough, you will say, you know what? All of that's not going to lead me to where I ultimately want to go. Or you will give yourself some grace and you'll say, it's okay for me to have a bite or two and enjoy but not lose, lose my stuff and just go hog wild. So you're in the right place if you're sick of working on this diet and fitness and exercise and health goal over and over and over again, like you're a hamster on a flipping wheel. So, you know, I want you to think about it. it it's about so many times we start a goal, stuff happens, and then we feel like we're back to square one. We start a goal, we're plugging along, stuff happens, and then we start back to square one. So you're in the right place because we're going to talk about how do you like stop in that like perpetual reboot mode is the best way for me to describe it. You know, it's like, um, think about like your computer. Our computers get stuck and the first thing we do is, you know, you control out delete or you unplug it or you power it down or you do something that like just like helps it kind of like readjust from what's going on. So if you're tired of losing the same 10, 20, 30 pounds, keep listening, my friends. Keep, keep, keep listening. So part of my six-step method that I work, work with my clients on is that 
the first two first two things are all about getting clear about what it is that you want and connecting to it. Because if you're not clear, you'll never hit a goal. Uh, there's a saying that says, you, it's gonna come to me later, it's gonna come to me. Um, but if you, if, you, uh, if you never set a target, you're always gonna hit it, right? Nothing from nothing gets you nothing. So if I'm never setting a goal, I never have the fear of not setting it. I never had the fear of not hitting it. I never had the fear of ever getting it done. So some, that's why most of us just kind of say, we're not gonna set a goal. The other reason why we don't set goals is that we don't wanna dream bigger. You know, again, that fear of disappointment, that fear of maybe I might have to do some stuff. I might have to do some things that might make me feel uncomfortable. I might have to ask for help. I might have to just literally do like through a 360 of how my life is and change is, I'm not someone who likes change. Whatever it is, you can't sit in the corner and wish and pray and hope unless you're willing to take the first step, right? Um, the laws of the universe, the universe likes action. You know, it's going, it's like the universe likes it as a chess game. As you take your steps, it's going to help and meet you with your action. So you have to be clear, like what's hap what do I want? And then you have to connect to it. And the connection piece is your why. Um, and I've talked about this before on the show. Um, Simon, Simon Sinek, he has a great TED talk and I'll put it in the show notes, all about your why. And basically it's that people don't really care about you until you tell them why to care. So, for example, Apple products. Most people like Apple products because they build product, their why is to build products that are quality and simple to use, right? That's their one thing. You know, Mercedes, their why is the best or nothing, right? That they're like, we are here to create a quality product, a quality experience, and if we're not able to do it, it's not, it's a no go, right? So those are the same things that you have to have for yourself, right? So you have to say, you know, if I'm trying to lose this weight and I want it to be a forever thing, why in Hades am I doing it? And it has to be so strong that if there is a snowstorm and you're supposed to go to a 5 a.m. Zumba class, you're like, I'm there. So think about that. And it, you know, the big thing about this is that so many people want these answers to come like this. It might take you a couple days for you just to really like sit in silence and just say, what is it that I want? Why do I want it? And just really let that all marinate and get clear. And you know, I say it all the time, I'm a big journaler and like getting quiet. And sometimes when you're sitting there and you're saying, why do I want this goal? And you just ask yourself that question, it is, ridiculous some of the stuff that comes out of your subconscious that you're just like, oh, did I just write that down, right? So I want you to really think about, that's like the first step is like really get clear about why is it that you wanna lose the weight before you even start to set a goal? Because if you're losing the weight for someone else, it's not gonna work, point blank. If you, um, you're, and if it is say, for, for example, like a health scare, um, he's gonna kill me, but I'm doing it anyway. My husband, Every six months he goes to the doctor and literally like every six weeks before his doctor's appointment, he's like, time to clean it up. But it's not enough of a motivation that keeps him from saying, because he goes to the doctor every six months. So that it's not enough of a motivation for him to keep it clean. It's, every, it's literally every four to six weeks before his doctor's appointment, he's like, ooh, I got to scale back on all his stuff. And I was like, you know, I ask, cause that's how I do. I'm like, why do you always have to go through this like fire drill? Like, why can't you find this happy medium? And you know, he just looks at me like, you don't know, because he doesn't have a why. Like his only why is to get through this doctor's appointment. And once he's through the doctor's appointment, back to my old habits. So I want you to think about, you know, is your why a short term why? And if it is a short term why, that's totally fine but you have to string together a number of whys in order for you to make this a lasting change, if that makes sense. One of the things about uh, this TV show is like I don't get feedback from the audience, and usually when I do live speaking events and I say something and I'm like, did that make sense? Did that come out like English? And so I, don't, I can't have that here. So um, 
So hopefully that came out like English. If it did not come out like English, do me a favor, shoot me an e email. So anyway, you have to have that clear why. That's your connection. And then your goals have to be so crystal clear that anyone on the street walking by, I mean, said, this is my goal. They would be like, I know exactly what that is. Good luck to you, sister girl. So what I always tell people, the best thing to do is set fewer goals because, you know, some people have this, like, you know, this giant like wheel of life, right? And they'll set work, they'll set several work goals, several personal care goals, several relationship goals, several spiritual goals, several relationship goals. And it's like, Wah. and sometimes they say, you know, it's better to like, let's work in a smaller space then to like expand all of this and then feel overwhelmed and then shut down. So if, if I want you to kind of, if you were to look at kind of like that wheel and say, where on that wheel do you feel you need the most effort? So then you say, this is where I need the most effort. So say I need uh, health, I need the most effort or relationships, I need the most effort, right? And then I want you to say, where do I need the least effort? And I want you to look at, the most effort and the least effort. And I want, to, and want you to say, okay, in order to make this change, here are the things that I'd like to see happen, right? So you make those lists. And then from there, you say, hmm, which one of these would be something that I could commit to in the next 30 days? And I want it to be something that is easy with a little push. So that you're get, you're starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable. You're starting to get a little uneasy about the actions that you need to take. And what and once you find that goal, so say it's um, true story. So you know one of my clients, you know we were working together, and one of her things is that um, she drinks entirely too much coffee. She she's like I she goes I, I I don't know how much how many Starbucks I bought from the amount of coffee that I drink. So what she said is she wants to scale back her Starbucks. And I said, okay, that's great, good goal. So if we go through what, you know, the SMART method. So SMART method is your goal is specific. Your goal is measurable. Your goal is actionable. Your goal is realistic. Your goal has time limits. Then that is a SMART goal. So let's break through Let's call her Susie. That's not her real name. It's protected for the innocent. So let's call her Susie. So Susie wants to, Susie wants to um, stop going stop going to Starbucks. I'm like, great. That's, so that's lofty when you say, I want to stop going to Starbucks, okay? So we've, we've determined what the what is, but we also have to, we have to come out with what the frequency is. So give me something measurable. So she's like, she goes seven days a week, and she's drinking anywhere from three to four cups of coffee at Starbucks. So I said, great. So now I said, I go, what, how, how can we make this measurable? You know, are you going cold turkey? Are you, you know, are you only going say Monday and Friday? Are you only going on weekends? You know, where is the, the, where do you feel that you can break this down? Is it every other day? Are you cutting back one cup of coffee? So she said, you know what? She goes, she goes I feel like I got this. I'm not going Monday through Friday. I'm only having two cups of coffee, one on Saturday and one on Sunday. So now we've gotten down to the measurable. Two cups of Starbucks on Saturday and Sunday. Now, you could take it to the next level and say two cups of, two cups of coffee at Starbucks, um, one at lunchtime, and, and both are gonna be at lunchtime, right? So you can, you know, Get down to that granular level. A lot of times, when someone is setting a like um, a workout goal with me, I will always I will make sure that they get it down to the time. So, for example, if they said I want to work out three days a week, I'm like, okay, what are your three days? And then I'm gonna say what specific time you're gonna work out. Is it a morning workout? Is it a lunchtime workout? Is it an evening workout? And that way, they take that and they put it in their calendar, so that it's like a date that you can't break. So then. You know, so she so she gave me how we're gonna measure it. It's only two cups of coffee, and she gave me the action that it's it's only gonna be um, uh, Saturday and Sunday at lunchtime. 
So now, and it's, and that, so here's where the kind of like, you put the rubber to the road. Is this realistic for you? So I always say to people, everyone falls into three lanes, right? So we've all been on a highway. And so on a highway, you have people who are in the far left lane and they're just, you know, driving 80 plus and they're just like cruising along. Then you have people in the middle lane who some people drive up, uh, some people are just there to speed up and pass to get, you know, either get into the left lane or to the right lane. But it's not really like a true travel lane, right? It's one of those lanes where like, you know, you drive a little fast and then you might get over and drive a little faster or you might go over to the right and drive a little slower. So it's like one of those kind of like intermediary lanes. And then you have people in the far right lane who they are, so, you know, speed limit is posted and they're like, that's what I'm doing. And, you know, sometimes they slow down so the car is on to the highway. Sometimes they speed up a little bit. But for the most part, they're just plodding along. So you have to decide where you are. And I will be honest with you, it depends on where you are. You know, some people can be on one goal, they can be in the left lane, and on another goal, they can be in the right lane. But here's where you have to be honest with yourself and say, where am I? You know, is this possible? So, you know, given that Susie goes to Starbucks every single day, and for her to say, I'm gonna go from seven to two, you know, I had to ask her, like, is that realistic? Are you someone who can like, you know, take it, you know, to the left lane and punch the gas? And, you know, for certain things in my life, I can do that. And for other things, I'm like, I need to baby step my way into doing that. And, you know, a lot of times when I work with f folks on, when it comes to like weight loss, you know, the re reality comes with how quickly can your body lose weight, right? You know, because some people are like, I'm going to lose 30 pounds by the 4th of July. And I'm like, good luck. We got a month and losing 10 pounds in 30 days, uh, losing 10, 10 pounds a week is not realistic and not long lasting. And if you do lose 10 pounds a week, I want you to see a medical professional. Um... So, and we have a time, you know, so for the next 30 days, that's what she's working on. And, you know, after those 30 days pass, she might say, you know what, I might feel I'm good with just having Starbucks on the weekends. Or she might say, you know what, I want to just have it on Sundays. So, you know, it really all depends. And so I always have my clients set goals and 30, 60, and 90 day increments because I want you to feel momentum. I want you to feel action because if you said, uh, a year from now, so much can happen in a year, but like 90 days is a nice, um, nice tight window that you're able to, you know, slowly chip away, but it's going to come fast enough that you're going to see, uh, reap the benefits of your efforts. Yes, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, so the other thing is you have to write these down. So there's a, a uh, Harvard professor who went to went to MBA students, and this was like the 70s or 80s, went to MBA students and said, and seg segmented, had a group that wrote down their goals and said, in the t next 10 years, I'm going to be blah, 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 blah. And then he had another group that verbally told him their goals. And then he had another group that, that just thought it, never wrote it down, and never told anybody. So 10 years, you know, fast forward 10 years, he goes back to the groups, and the group that physically wrote down their goal, 42% of them hit their goal. And I know in this day and age, it's so easy for us to say, oh, I have it on my smartphone, or, you know, I typed it in my computer. There's something about when you put pen to paper that just like, burns it into our brains. I don't know. I don't understand that. It's, you know, neuroscience, but I ever since I heard that, I physically write my goals and I put them all over my house so that I'm always reminded of what I'm working on. So that it's not this like you're know, trying to kick the can down the road. It's like I'm kicking the can in a specific direction. So, I want you to take a look at your goals and you know, as you're working out, what's one thing you could do this week, right? Because if you've been kicking the can for so long, you're just like, ah, oh, uncle, 
Think of one simple thing you could do this week. I always like small actions. Small actions move big mountains. And if you don't have any goal, you know, like I said, what's one area of your life that you want to excel in? Because we, I find, I'm hard pressed to find anybody who doesn't want something. Hard pressed. We all want something. And so I want you to think about what it is you want. Don't be afraid. Have the courage to say, this is what I want and claim that. And then say, you know, where do I want to be one year from today? And then take it from that one year. So where are we, May? May of 2019, where do I want to be in May of 2019? And, and, and back that out and says, okay, in May of 2019, this is where I want to be. But what action do I have to take today in order to get there? And then I always say, you know, we have the time. So, you know, Susie said her 30 days was her coffee. Without a time-based deadline, it becomes a dream. It becomes a hope. It becomes a wish. It becomes anything. But I'm going to move my feet and take action. And that's where a lot of people, that's where a lot of people get tripped up. They don't take the action. They say, oh, this is what I want. And they, you know, hope fairies drop it from the sky into their lap and it, and it wiggles and they don't have to do a darn thing. You have to take action. That's how things get done. And it doesn't have to be big actions. Small steps. Every single day, I want you to think about like your life if, if it's like a, a sculpture and it's a piece of marble. And every single day, you're chipping away at the sculpture. Every single day, you're chipping away at the marble. Till one day, you're like, look at this beautiful sculpture of my life. And I created it. You know, I didn't wait for someone else to like do stuff for me. I was like, look at me making my life happen. And, you know, some people even write a personal contract for their goal. I will, when I work with clients, I write a personal contract between me and them so that it, it's, it's serious. It's not something, you know, it's very easy for us to blow ourselves off. We're awesome at blowing ourselves off. But like when you have that contract and you sign, it says, you know, I'm committed to having two cups of coffee for the next 30 days on Saturday and Sunday. Stuff just got real, right? You're just like, ooh, darn. I'm, I'm, I'm signing a contract you know, that I'm committing to do this. And as you take your big goals, you chunk them down and you make them smaller and smaller and smaller to like, you're like, okay, this is what I'm doing this week. And we always, as I go through my goals, I have milestone dates and I have results and I'm always checking in and like tuning, you know, do I need to amp it up here? Do I need to tune it down there? Did I hit it? And so it's always trying to figure out where, where I am, you know, because goals help us create consistency. And it's the consistency, especially when it comes to health and fitness, that's where you're going to win. Because what happens is, you know, just like my husband, he sprints for this four to six weeks, you know, deprives, deprives, has this no list. And then, you know, doctor's appointment, his doctor says, okay, and he's, back off to wherever. So if we found this like meet, happy medium where we have foods we love and then we also have foods that are healthy for us and we have this kind of like this healthy balance where we don't have these big, big swings, we'll, we'll, work, we'll make it well worth it in the end. So what I have for you, if, you, um, if this is, if was of interest for you and this was helpful for you, I have um, an actual goal setting worksheet on my website that I want you to um, go and grab. So um, the show notes, actually I'll, I'll put it up later tonight after the show's over. Um, so if you go to my website, fabfitsquad.com, um, and right in the menu bar it says um, live TV. If you go right there, you will see this episode and um, there'll be a download for you to put together a goal worksheet. And so that way you guys can start setting some goals for the summer and not taking your foot off of the gas pedal for, for the summer. Um, on my next show, which is going to be in June, I can't believe it's going to be June already, uh, on June the 12th, I'm doing a show, I'm actually having a guest. Uh, having a guest, uh, and she's going to be talking about the importance of gut health and 
your mind, like the gut, the gut mind connection. And I was just like riveted. So I'm hoping that you guys are going to be just as fascinated with, you know, how digestion affects our mood, how digestion affects our thyroid. It's just, whoa, crazy, crazy, crazy. And it's, I'm, I'm looking forward to it and I hope you guys are looking forward to it as well. Um, cause I've been really going down this whole gut, um, gut path and it's been a very, 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 very interesting journey. Um, but thank you guys so much for tuning in. You can find me, um, on Instagram at Kim Jefferson coach. You can also find me on Facebook at Kim, uh, Kim Jefferson. And you can always come to my website, which is fab fitsquad.com. Um, my show notes um, and that goal setting guide will be right on my website and I'll, I think, actually it's already up. I, yes, it was already up. I was really good this week. It's already up. So just go to my website, fabfitsquad.com and right um, in the menu bar, you will see um, live TV. So I want to thank you guys so much and I wish you guys a very, very, very happy Memorial Day and have a safe and happy one. Um, and you know what? Make a plan for Memorial Day. Don't let it be one of those like, you know, things you wake up on Tuesday morning and think you got to head to the gym and burn it off because that never works out for you. So have a fabulous Memorial Day and I will see you guys on June 12th when I am talking all about the gut mind connection. Talk to you guys soon. Went to work now. Now he She's home. Brian Awid laugh? She's home now. Brian and Wid? Are they there? Wid. Wid was so Brian. Everybody home. Okay. Yeah. Well, I see.